Chapter 5 Alice the Queen Alice and the Hatter strolled into the magnificent castle, Alice ooing and awing at every sight that her little eyes greeted her with. She looked to the right where a magnificent fountain stood, gushing what looked to be crystal clear waters, so clear in fact that it seemed almost glowing. She then looked to her left where two large red oak doors stood with two elaborately decorated golden plated handles. Hatter, what's in there? She asked, pointing to the red doors. That, my dear, is the dining hall where we will prepare you a grand feast to celebrate your coronation, replied the Hatter. A, a feast? What will we be having? inquired Alice, her curiosity being piqued by any little thing in the castle. Why, anything you like, of course, exclaimed the Hatter, throwing his hands into the air as if he had just performed some amazing magic trick. Our chefs can cook up practically anything your little heart could desire. But for now, at least, allow me to show you to your throne room, he said. Alice nearly burst with excitement as those words left the Hatter's lips. She began to let her mind wander, not particularly focusing on anything, until the Hatter's voice broke her unfocused gaze. Here we are, your throne room queen, Alice, he said to her as he bowed at the waist. Ahead lay an immaculate jeweled chair, though she could hardly call it a chair, as it was enormous, far larger than any seat she had ever laid eyes upon. Perhaps that is why it is called a throne and not just a chair. The throne was heart-shaped, with an enormous ruby as red as blood placed at the top. Inside, a makeshift crown adorned with hearts. Suddenly, Alice had a thought, looking at the hearts in the crown, and the shape of the throne. This all seems slightly familiar. Just then, as if sensing the girl's slight recognition of familiarity, the Hatter quite abruptly cut off the girl's thoughts as he continued showing her about the castle. Come, 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 Alice! We mustn't be late! cheered the Hatter as he checked his small watch that hung from his waistcoat pocket. Late? questioned Alice. Late for what, exactly? Why, the party, of course! To, to welcome, welcome you, you back home. Just then, Alice felt a familiar feeling come over her as inky darkness began to fill her vision. She felt herself drifting, but she could vaguely hear the Hatter's voice still echoing through her head. It was only one phrase that she audibly chose to focus on, though. To welcome you back. Home. Back. Back home. Back. Wander down. Back home. Where flowers bloom and creatures roam. Creatures, certainly not. Mom and Dad are not creatures. They are proper and well-mannered humans. It was then that Alice heard that booming baritone of a voice called to her from within the darkness. This one, a new voice. Soon, soon, soon you'll see. 
The apple doesn't fall very far from the tree. The tree that's brought insanity. The tree of all humanity. From that tree you entered here, where people adore and cherish you, dear. But beware, beware, hear and take warning. Not all is as it seems in this land of glory. Look, look and you will see. Beware the hatter and the wretched tree. We are glad that you have returned again, for only now may the fun begin. The feeling of spinning rushed over Alice. Though due to the darkness, she couldn't tell if she was really moving at all. Alice! Boomed the Hatter's voice, though by now it had changed. Changed into a new voice. Alice! yelled the new voice. It sounded almost familiar to Alice, loving and paternal. Alice! screamed the voice. Alice slowly opened her eyes and searched for the source of the caring voice, and they quickly came to rest upon a face that she knew quite well, as it was her father's face. She then scanned her surroundings and quickly realized that she was laying down, but not in her own room. In fact, she wasn't even in her home. Papa? Came the small child's sleep-dusted words. Alice! Oh, thank heavens you're awake! cried her father as tears of relief made their presence known on his cheeks. Where are we, Papa? asked Alice, her eyes and brain scanning everything in the room, trying to ascertain where she could be. She saw four jars to her left, all neatly organized and filled with various things. One held cotton balls, another held popsicle sticks, the third held band-aids, and the fourth held... Small hearts. We're at the hospital, sweetie. Your mother and I went to wake you up this morning, and you wouldn't. We even called over a doctor, and, uh, and nothing would wake you. That's why we're here, Alice. Are, are you okay? Asked David, his eyes showing a concern that only a parent could know. Alice, however, was still transfixed on the jar, the fourth one on the counter. Her father continued to ask his daughter if she was all right, but Alice would not answer him. Alice? Darling, are, are you hurt? Do you remember anything? Did you, Daddy? What are those? She cut him off, pointing to the fourth jar to her left. What are what, dear? That fourth jar over there, it has tiny hearts in it. Do you see them, Papa? David shifted his gaze from his daughter to look to where she was pointing only to find nothing. He looked back to his daughter, who still held her arm out, pointing to a patch of air which did not hold a material object. Alice? There is no fourth jar. Don't be silly, Daddy. It's right there. David once again looked. And this time, he saw a jar. He now began to worry, and then... As he moved his eyes back to his daughter, he found that she was no longer looking away from him. Nor was she pointing. Alice had rested her arm back on the bed and now locked her gaze with her father's. Papa? Asked Alice. Yes, dear? Replied David in a low voice, which clearly showed fear. Have you ever been to Wonderland? David froze. 
as if those words were a deadly animal eyeing him hungrily. Fear began to course through David's veins, as everything he had tried so hard to forget came crashing back. Darkness, utter and complete, all-consuming darkness. That is what surrounded David. This, however, was not unfamiliar to him, and right on cue, as sure as the mortality of all our mortal souls, there came a voice from deep within the dark. David. David. No, David thought. No, this is his real. None of this is real. A chill wrapped around him as he felt something with the faint texture of fur brush against his ear. <laughs> Did you, Did you really think, think that you could run, run, run for us forever, David? 